like I, I just don't understand how you could be saying on one hand there's all these strong ties and this is a national emergency for public safety and I walked every day by these protests it just doesn't really add up at all Ms. Minister, Dancho, sorry, just, just 10 would, seconds, Minister. Well, I would say first, it's not an insinuation. We got the advice from uh, our law enforcement that we've met the threshold. And secondly, Ms. Dancho, put us in res danger respectfully, Ms. Dancho, like, there were Ottawans who were subjected to intimidation, to harassment, threats of rape. I mean, the, the, the and those were all supported by... Well, how charges, could we have possibly uh, been allowed and, to walk by that sorry. every day? No one is in jail in Ottawa from the convoy for rape threats, regardless of what the public safety minister Marco Mendocino says. The Convoy for Freedom was a nationwide protest movement of thousands of Canadian truckers and tens of thousands of their supporters. The convoy converged on Ottawa, on the nation's capital, and stayed for nearly four weeks until the Liberal government invoked the Emergency Act, which gave police extraordinary measures to break up the protest and arrest the protest leaders and seize funds and trucks. And to top it all off, the Liberals started a disinformation campaign of their own against the truckers. Harassment, threats of rape. He made it up. Those are a real crime, by the way, rape threats. Not like the made up crime of encouraging people to honk their horns. Counseling to commit mischief, as they say, which is what Convoy to Ottawa organizer Tamara Litch was held for two weeks for. I mean, the police in Ottawa, they're so lacking in things to do that they're investigating the hurt feelings of journalists. Remember this? I also know the media has been subjected to um, slurs, to abuse, to illegal activities to themselves. So we have one active investigation ongoing right now. And I would ask that if there are any more activities that need to be reported, please report them to the Ottawa Police Service because we will take them seriously and conduct an investigation around those activities. But this isn't a crazy liberal gone rogue with some classist nonsense. This is a feature, not a bug. This is a policy of the liberals to look down their smug noses at working class men as brutish premolesters, lurkers and crypto Nazis. Remember this? the small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians who have been there for each other, who know that following the science and stepping up to protect each other is the best way to continue to ensure our freedoms, our rights, our values as a country. Don't forget this tweet, though, because Trudeau doubled down on his basket of deplorables moment with it. Today in the House, members of Parliament unanimously condemned the anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-Black racism, homophobia and transphobia that we've seen on display in Ottawa over the past number of days. Together, let's keep working to make Canada more inclusive. Ugh, yuck. You can almost hear him saying that in his husky, breathy voice that he seems to think is so sexy. Anytime the Liberals are pressed on any issue that they can't spin their way out of, or if a reveal of Trudeau's stupid socks of the day won't be distracting enough to change the channel, they whip out the sexist, homophobic, sexually dangerous accusations. I can show you one more example of this. Here's one of the most vitriolic cry bullies ever to grace the House of Commons. Catherine McKenna saying that pipelines should not be built because construction camps full of our dads, brothers, husbands, uncles and sons are a danger to local women instead of a boom to the local economy. Listen. Gender impact? How's that fit into a pipeline approval process? So I'm really glad you asked that because I think people are like, well, what is this gender mm -hmm. thing? Well, imagine that you, were, uh, you have uh, a, a huge number of people going to a remote community, many men. What is the impact on the community? What is the impact on women in the community? Mm -hmm. And actually, once again, smart proponents understand this. So they're going to put measures in place. That's all it is. It's just taking a smart approach to thinking about, okay, what's going to be the impact of a major development in a particular area? Okay, that's interesting. All right. Ugh, this woman. I see a man camp and I think of the sacrifices of the people there to earn a living and take care of their families. She sees rapists. The liberals are projecting hard there, though. Let's go through a few examples, including the obvious. Justin Trudeau, if he isn't firing women who speak up to him, like Jody Wilson-Raybould and Selena Caesar-Chavanez, 
two women who paid the price for standing up to Justin Trudeau's corruption, well, he's groping them like he did to a BC reporter who experienced his hands on her body a little differently. But that's not where this ends with these liberal weirdos. Here's Marwan Tabara. He got three years probation for this stunt, which went down in 2020 but wasn't reported until months later. Just after 11 p.m. that night, Tabara entered the house and found the man and woman in the other room. Tabara argued with the man and Tabara punched him several times. The woman tried to intervene and Tabara took hold of the woman and took her outside the house. The man and the woman both called 911. Police arrived at 11.15 and found Tabara sitting in the home. He was arrested at the scene. But wait, there's more. Remember Darshan Kang? He was a Trudeau Liberal MP from Calgary with a penchant for the weird and inappropriate. An independent investigation found that he tried to enter a staffer's hotel room and unwantingly touched her. There's a long list of other allegations against Kang that went unsubstantiated, but there's more. Kent Hare, another Trudeau Liberal MP, he also can't keep his hands in creepy remarks to himself. Look at this. Kristen Raworth had accused Hare of making sexually inappropriate comments to her when he was a Calgary MLA and she was an Alberta legislature staffer a decade ago. She said the first time she met Hare, he called her yummy and made similar remarks or tried to brush up against her in later encounters. The Prime Minister's office commissioned an independent investigation by law firm Reuben Tomlinson LLP instead of an inquiry by the House of Commons Human Resources Officer because the alleged incidents didn't occur while Hare was an MP. The review found Raworth's claims were legitimate, but details of the independent investigation were kept under wraps by the PMO due to privacy concerns. So even after the fact, the Liberals helped hide what Kent Hare did. I think you get my point, but I'll give you yet one more example, and it was in the Trudeau PMO. A staff member in the Prime Minister's office has resigned after an investigation into allegations of inappropriate behaviour, though he continues to deny any wrongdoing. Claude Eric Gagné, formerly the Deputy Director of Operations, had been on leave from the office since November. An independent investigation into his alleged conduct concluded Friday. In a statement, Gagné said he denies the allegations against him and that he resigned of his own accord. Friends, I think this video is getting a little long and I haven't even touched on General Vance or the guy who replaced General Vance and the allegations of inappropriate behavior against them. What's my point? I feel safer as a woman around a guy who thinks chivalry is a virtue than one who thinks chivalry is a tool of the patriarchy. And ladies, if a guy tells you he's a male feminist, I think you're about to get groped. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you like this video, and I sure hope you do, one of the best ways to support our work here at Rebel News is to treat yourself to a Rebel News Plus subscription. We've got a whole host of premium content that your Rebel News Plus subscription will give you access to. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com to become a member today.